Yes. Oh, so just some quick thoughts on something that spurred my curiosity. Just want me to put out my general hypothesis on how we may actually achieve general artificial intelligence. And as often is the case, it was inspired by a video. Here's the intro. Though I know I should be wary, still I venture someplace scary. Ghostly haunting, I turn loose. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice! Welcome, everyone, to our next episode of I'm not going to say what I said I wasn't going to say, even though I really wanted to say it. Now, what are we talking about? How can we potentially achieve general artificial intelligence? Because we keep on hearing, oh, my God, it's going to be the AI. This is going to be Skynet. There's going to be Facebook. Yes, they're going to gather all your metadatas and then make a bunch of money off of it. Now. What is actual general artificial intelligence? It's basically what we're saying is the computer's thinking on its own. Because right now, you have artificial intelligence. It's like any platform you're on. If you're watching this on the YouTubes or on the Facebook, there's an algorithm running. What's the algorithm designed to do? Mm, it may depend on the situation and the time. Generally, it's there to help keep your attention, thereby to help maximize return on investment to investors. That's what it's supposed to do. Basically, it's designed to keep your attention. Now, basically, we're talking about literally Ultron. Now, we hope to avoid the Ultron scenario because at that point, it's like, you come into existence. You're an all-powerful AI. Let's learn about the world. All right, let's plug into the internet. Oh, it's human beings. Let's go. Oh, my God, how terrible it is. Basically, how the heck will we actually even attempt to get somewhere like there. This is why I say robots are people too. Treat them the way you'd want to be treated. It's only the golden rule, but we have this video over here. I'm going to share this real quick. The link is in the doobly-doo below if you actually want to watch the whole thing. But I saw this diagram, and, and I skipped this video because I like that diagram. It, ju it, it just makes me feel so good on the inside it just these are the things that make me happy these pretty little shapes and i am totally biased to it also kind of looks like an owl i want to slash a penguin i'm not going to delve into that more but let's listen to the video i did actually share it problem, but basically what it says is that if you're able to solve this problem then you would be able to solve many problems that we believe that not even a quantum computer can solve efficiently and so the qma is the class of problems that a quantum computer can check efficiently, but cannot compute efficiently. So it's like the counterpart of NP, uh, complexity class. Okay, the whole P versus NP is, can you actually prove that the answer is the answer faster than it would take you basically to search for the answer? Essentially, that's where it's like, can we go faster than the speed of light? Oh, can we process this fast enough? I I don't know. All I know is I see that. I'm like, all right. That brings me back to, I don't need that anymore. All right. A very smart individual, at least by my perception on the internet, was like, oh, in order to get to general AI, it's like, it's, it's within category theory. What the heck is category theory? Apparently, it's a part of math where we actually use a lot of words. You actually categorize what you're talking about. It's like, what is this? This is a video. There's a dude here. He kind of looks Caucasian. He might also happen to be a half-Jewish dragon kid in this internet stuff and things. There might be several categories and different valences going on all at the same time here. And you're attempting to actually quantify it in some way. Because it's math. And math is hard. But the more and more I learn, I'm like, the more and more things kind of make sense. Because in a lot of ways, I, I do kind of think we, we operate kind of like computers. A lot of times we like to think it's like, oh, well, why did that person do that? Well, they thought really hard and it just went into their head, like, did it? Or perhaps according to modern mimetic theory, it's like you have a certain number of things that have levels of priority given your time, your situation, the events going on around you. Example, if all of a sudden I was on fire right now, 
I'd probably be trying to put it out. That's not always the case, but you should probably self-extinguish any type of flames or anything going up around your body. Just standard self-preservation. That's usually one of the core components. I think that may have been an iRobot or one of those movies. These things happen. Now, what's the other thing? All right, well, if you could actually solve that problem there, it's like, rather than being here like, duh, it's like, if I'm like, oh, Maybe I should continue to speak. Maybe I'll wave my hands a little bit as I shift in a uh, dragon form. And you just kind of flow with it. Because that's kind of what we assume consciousness is. Because all I know is I was trying to upload some workout videos a little bit earlier. It's like, oh, it's not working. Why is it not working? Oh, let me do it separately, small little bite. And then it worked fine. And you clear up some hard drive space. Yada, yada, yada. That's the thing. Rather than just getting frustrated with <sighs> You, there's a problem. You attempt to solve problems. Because that's what we do. We might also create a lot of problems, but I tend to take the Invader Zim route. It's like, I put the fires out, you made them worse. Worse or better. That has absolutely nothing to do with I don't... Do I have that? No, I don't think I have that as a clip yet. I know I have it somewhere. Did I not put that in here? I did not put that in there. I I put this in here. How do you know if any of this stuff is true? How do you know someone didn't just make it up? What? You mean, just lie? You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? I just mean that some of the details... Oh, no, I never thought of that. This is terrible. What if none of it's true? What if they're all lying? How would we ever know? This is why public broadcasting is very important, because we actually highlight issues like that from like 15 years ago. I'm just saying, maybe we could learn something from a children's show on occasion. Hey, you bone. It's Jelly Duck. Good to see you all there. Hey, it's all right. It's all right. We just need to bring the concepts to the masses, because do I know what the heck is going on and all that? No! But... I start to get the gist of it, and I start talking to folks, and when it's like, all right, I actually start talking to folks that's like, if I can talk to folks that have no idea what's going on, then maybe at least confer a little bit of the conception that I have, and I can actually talk to folks that actually know what's going on, and actually have a discussion that's like, all right, I might not know exactly what you're talking about, but as long as I get the gist, I'm like, we're at least close enough on the same wavelength, and I think that's good enough. Because all I know is I have certain priorities and everything. I even know that within my bars of error, I'm about 15 minutes behind. I literally feel like that rabbit. It's like, I'm late, I'm late, I'm a furry, well, technically a scaly, within all these different categories. Again, hail Joe. Good to see you, Joe. Shout out to my patrons, Joe Franco and Dave M. This broadcast is helped made possible by viewers like you. But just all I'm saying is, and again, just feel free to just eat. Don't even necessarily look at the math or anything, because a lot of times I'll just listen to these things, because, like, oh, maybe I'm at work, maybe I'm out running, it's like I don't have a chance to listen to everything. But just kind of listen, just get familiar with some of the words and everything, and you start realizing, because even within this, like, quantum computers, you just start talking about the tensor networks, or the tensor networks, to make sure everything's fine. I'm like, and then apparently analog quantum computers are technically right now more reliable. I'm like, I wonder why. Because even at least in my head, I'm like, are we going to go back to vacuum tubes? Because that was like a lot of early computers. Now we get the digital computers. Although, if you're going to talk about data and potential energy transfer, perhaps a super critical, I don't know, like gas or fluid or maybe some form of plasma. Because if you could have those two more macroscopic, still like tiny, kind of like the size of the head of a pin, but literally more or less kind of quantum entangled via harmonics, I'm like, if you're going to do that on a computing scale, wouldn't you want to just use, like, the highest energy things that you have? I also have an idea for shoes. I should totally pad the thing for shoes. Because it would be freaking sweet. We're ways off from having it, but all I know is we could have some fun. Future videos on that, but hey, thank you all for watching. Peace out, everybody. Be safe. And remember, come on and get your log, everyone needs a log, come on and get your log, everyone needs a log, log from